Welcome to the first episode of Bible Question and Answers with Danako. In today's episode, we explore two questions that have been lingering on the minds of Christians for a time now. The very first one, how do we arrive by three days and three nights as they said by Jesus, as prophesied in the Old Testament, as affirmed by the disciples and as witnessed by the Pharisees? If Matthew chapter 28, Mark 16 and Luke 24 tell us about the Sunday resurrection, Thursday of the week, Matthew 27, Mark 15, Luke 23 and John 19 tell us about the Friday crucifixion. How do we arrive by three days and three nights? Because if we count, we would not get that. We will get two days and two nights. Friday evening, Saturday evening. Saturday morning, Sunday morning. That is two days and two nights. So how do we arrive by it? Since we know Jesus Christ cannot lie. Again, the second question. Can a Christian celebrate Easter? Because we understand that it comes from pagan origins. So should a Christian indulge himself in the celebration of Easter? Join me as we explore these questions. We use the words of Jesus Christ himself, since he cannot lie. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 39 and 40, it says, But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. Verse 40, For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So this is where the confusion begins. What is the meaning of in the heart of the earth? If Jesus had said, so shall the Son of Man be dead in three days and three nights, it would be clear. So shall the Son of Man be given up if for three days and three nights. That would also be understandable. But in the heart of the earth, causes us to go back to check certain Bible principles. So we go to 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 1. There is a principle we need not neglect. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 1. It says, This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. We go to Deuteronomy chapter 19 verse 15. It also says, One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniqui iniquity. Or for any sin, in any sin that he sinned at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses, shall the matter be established. And let's go to what Jesus Christ himself says in Matthew 18 verse 16. He says, But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And so we understand that we cannot use just one witness to establish a case. We cannot use just one Bible verse to explain the meaning of the three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So we go to Exodus chapter 20 verse 4. We will break this expression down into two. We understand the earth in the earth and we understand when the heart comes in. We will try to understand these two. So Exodus 20 verse 4 says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath. So this expression was said by God. Exodus 20 verse 1 says, And God speak all these were saying. So we understand that God also used the word in the, in the earth. And how do we understand in the earth? In little Bible verses and books, the Israelites were cautioned against making graven images. So in this case, in the earth means anything on this earth anything on this earth we go to jesus is saying in matthew chapter 6 verse 10 thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth thy will be done in earth that is the literal translation thy will be done in earth and then the modern translation modified for us to understand that thy will be done on earth and so this also buttresses the point that when we use the expression in the earth we find that expression in the bible it simply means anything on this earth so where does the heart comes into play how does the bible use the heart we understand that the bible uses the heart in the same way it uses the mind they are used interchangeably and even in those days the heart was taught to be the main place that everything took place that is everything in terms of imagination perceptions ideas and all that that is where they taught it to take place so we go to Mark chapter 2 verse 6 and we are still using the same principle of two or three witnesses so we go to Mark chapter 2 verse 6 but there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their heart and reasoning in their heart we would say in our times reasoning in their minds but the bible uses reasoning in their heart let's go to another expression so we would fulfill the two or three witnesses Luke chapter 1 verse 51 he says he had shown strength with his arm he had scattered the proud in the imagination of the heart. 
we all know that we imagine with our mind and not with our heart. And so for their days, they use the heart and the mind interchangeably like I have said already. Now to the third witness, John chapter 12 verse 40. He had blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart. Not understand with their heart. Where does understanding come in? We understand by thinking in the mind. So same thing. This is being a witness that the mind and the heart were used interchangeably and they were believed to be connected. So then how do we understand in the heart? In the heart. If we take a computer, we take a computer, we understand that the CPU is the heart of the computer because that is where the thought process and all that happens. And that is the controlling unit of the computer so in this case you can see the cpu is the heart of the computer so if we understand that the mind and the heart are used interchangeably then who is the heart if the heart means that that is the controlling power then who is the heart of the earth what is the mean of in the heart of the earth we go down to job chapter 1 verse 7 he says and the lord said unto satan whence comest thou then satan answered the lord and said from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it in medieval days in the days of the israelites when you buy a land one way to signify that the land belongs to you is to walk across the length and across the breadth and that is the expression satan used in this case to show that he owned the land and did god rebuke him no the father didn't rebuke him because satan had legitimately warned the earth from adam and eve because he says that we are slaves of whoever we submit ourselves to listen to. Now to the second witness. When Jesus was being tempted in Matthew chapter 4 verse 8. He says again the devil take the devil take him up into an exceedingly high mountain. And showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Verse 9. And said unto him. All these things will I give you if thou will fall down and worship me. Verse 10 says that Jesus didn't rebuke him for saying the earth is his but rather rebuke him for demanding worship. So Jesus, the son, also understood that the earth belongs to the devil. We go to John chapter 14 verse 30. Jesus called Satan the ruler of the world. 2 Corinthians 4, 4, Paul uses the expression God of this world to for Satan. God of this world for Satan. So if that is the case, then we understand. Going back to read Matthew chapter 12 verse 40. Matthew chapter 12 verse 40. And we put in the elements of what we have found. Matthew 12 verse 40. It says, For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whole's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the power, in the hands of the power of the earth. If we are to put Satan in there. So Jesus would be, I read it again, the Son of Man shall be three days and three nights in the power of the controller of the earth. That is the devil. So, and now we understand that the belly of the whale is synonymous to the heart of the earth. So what happened to Jonah in the belly of the whale? Did he go where he wanted to go? No. The whale took him where he wanted, where it wanted. And was he able to move his hands, was he able to talk, was he able to pray? Yes, the Bible says he prayed. So what about Jesus? When the devil had him in his clutches, was he able to move? Yes, he spoke out. He spoke out to Peter. Do not do this. For do you think that I request for angels from heaven? I would not get legions to come and defend me. Jesus was able to speak. But was he taken to where he wanted to go? No, he was taken to where the devil wanted him to be. That is to the rulers of the world, rulers of the provinces and all that. That is where he was taken to. He was dragged along the way, a cross placed on him. That is the working of the devil. So in the power of the devil, it means that the full working of the devil was manifest. The full power of the devil was manifest in this case. And then when we go to Isaiah 53, it tells us that the wages of our sin is not only death, but suffering and death. And that is what the devil manifested, the full manifestation of the devil, suffering and death. So I ask once again, how is the three days and three nights fulfilled? When Jesus was arrested in Gethsemane on Thursday evening. So we count Thursday evening. Friday evening, he was not free. He died. Saturday evening, he died. So three nights. Friday morning, Saturday morning, and Sunday morning. Three days. So we have three nights and three days. That is fulfilling what Jesus Christ had said of himself. So truly, three days and three nights is biblical and it's applicable. It is not a lie. It is not a fallacy. And it's not a made-up story. So now we go to the second question. Can a Christian celebrate Easter? 
truly Easter let me give you some facts Easter is not of Christian origin the day for Easter was not was not fixed the day for Easter was not fixed until the year 325 AD in the Council of Nicaea that is when the day was fixed and up to now we don't have one day when i say the day was fixed i mean the duration the time frame it was given that after the equinox there should be it should be between march 25th and april 25th so the days would not extend past this and then in the equinox that is the equal day and equal night that is when it was celebrated in the medieval days they celebrated the spring goddess they celebrated the spring goddess because it was realized that in the spring the grass began to flourish it was realized that in the spring trees that were thought to be dead came back to life and so they celebrated this and so when the when the romans decided Magali decided to inculcate everybody into christianity they had to adopt and christian some pagan traditions and that is when easter was christened into the into the name easter because it comes from the word easter pasca pasque and all that and then the easter is a mesopotamian goddess the pasca pasque and all that from german from germany from greek and from latin and so yes they are from pagan origin but here is the catch paul says that in all things we do we should do it to the glory of god at this time the whole world now have agreed that that is when they are celebrating easter at this time churches are filled at this time the minds of men are placed in the solemn situation solemn solemn grounds so much so that if you go to talk to them about the true meaning of the death of christ they would readily accept it and have bible studies with you that can be a conversation starter i am celebrating easter with you and then with that mindset you are able to explain to them when paul went down to the city that was celebrating their idols and all that he didn't go and then cast down the idols he didn't go and tell them your idols are false rather he said he mentioned their name and said i have realized that you are religious so paul used the occasion of celebrating their gods to explain who god really is to them and so i submit to you that at this time i am not celebrating easter because of its pagan origin but i celebrate easter just so i can draw more people's attention to the right way of remembering the death of christ that is through the lord's supper and i can draw the attention to the salvation reason why christ came to die join me next week as we probe into more bible questions and answers if you have any question don't forget to bring the question into the comment section below if you have any contribution to what has been said you can bring it into the comment section below don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel so other christians will get to know and then we would all understand the christianity for which we have accepted